His Excellency Abdullah Mohammed Al Basti, Secretary General of the Executive Council. His Excellency Dr. Diamantino Pedro Azevedo, Minister of Minerals, uh, Mineral Resources, Petroleum, Gas, Republic of Congo. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. It is my honor and pleasure to welcome you all to Dubai, the new capital of the diamond trade. For some of you, it may be your first time with so much to explore. And for many, welcome back. Nearly six years ago, many of us gathered here at Al Mas Tower in this very room as the UAE chaired the Kimberley process as the first Arab country to do so. Key discussions were had, sweeping policy changes, solutions to price discovery for rough diamonds, common fund for NGOs, and a lot of progress. The Kimberley process had set the standard for other minerals and is always looked at as a benchmark. And in six years that have passed, so much in our, in our industry ha, ha, has evolved. We have shared and tackled challenges together in sickness and in health, in good and in bad markets. We, we endured the pandemic, saw new disruptions and invasions across the value chain. And today, we gather to reflect and look into the future at a diamond conference that sold out quicker than any of its predecessors. Despite discussions and the planning if we should do this or not, we hoped for the best, we pushed, and thank you all for showing how important Dubai is and this event is. I'm gonna go a bit off script. There has been developments in the last three years. Direct flight from Surat to the UAE. The first international flight out of Surat, and they picked United Arab Emirates. Thank you. When I booked for the flight to Tel Aviv, I didn't know that it was about the first flight. I just wanted to go on a few meetings and relax during the national day's vacation. And my travel agent, you want to be on the first flight to Tel Aviv? Fine, yeah, that one. Um, but there's an Emirates airline, like, no, put me on flight Dubai. There's no transit. You don't understand how, how much less headache it is without transiting. Um, to quote His Excellency Mohammed Al Khaja when he heard that I've traveled to Brazil and all these places, he's like, I'm waiting. This is before the UAE Israel Business Forum. He said, You could have come this morning on a Zoom call. You could have come this morning, met, had a few meetings, and come back at night. That's the advantage of flight Dubai three flights per day. There are many things that excite me about this visit. There are a lot of, I don't want to say first, but there are a lot, of, lot is happening. The, the main one, I think if you follow me on social media, you used to see me make coffee more than anything else. But you'll probably see me going to the expo more than anything else. And I cannot take my coffee pot with me to the expo, which is why you know, I have to take my Bunsen burner and everything else. Um, I'm going to stop here for a second. If you have not been to the expo, it's your duty to go there and visit your pavilion. Don't make the mistake I did in 2015, thinking it's six months, I'll always have time. As soon as I had time, I missed the expo of Milan by one day. Um, I've been to the Belgian one a few times. I'm not supposed to say this, but Jean-Claude Van Damme is in Dubai. I'm going to make sure he visits Belgium. He won't find What's the name? Tintin. He'll find the Smurfs and everything else over there with some good Belgian uh, fries on the top. But there are some other exciting ones. There are lessons to learn. There's networking. The people who manage the pavilions are actually visiting each other, doing business. And that's what the expo is, connecting minds, building the future. We're often considered a new country, but we are both new and very old. And this defines our culture and our passion for trade. Dubai was founded a little over 200 years ago, and it was founded as, as a tailor-made center for international trade. Over 100 years ago, Dubai established the principles of a tax-free environment for import and re-export and the trading of goods. Over time, our visionary leadership built an environment that was safe and where merchants from around the world could find common ground to trade. 
We were and are the marketplace for merchants of the region, attracting an even wider circle of traders and suppliers to our trading house and our ports. And lessons we have learned over time have no doubt allowed us to adapt in a world of shifting change, not looking to different things, but to do, dif uh, to do things differently bet and better. If, if you've read His Highness' book, My Vision, he talks about the mistakes and lessons that Dubai has, putting all its eggs in one basket. The pearls is one example. During the war times, the world focused on necessities more, on, more, more than luxury. But the mistake wasn't about just the situation. It was the fact that the pearling industry did not diversify. Then he refers back to why Emirates Airlines and the UAE connected with more countries. It was focused mostly on Iran due to the wars in the 80s. That affected us. So every challenge that comes by, do expect this country and city to grow stronger and get better. And I think if you want to look at an example of that, we performed strongly in 2020. This video you saw was, was in June of 2020 during the second aid. The first aid was a video of the gold coins, UAE gold bullion coins on Burj Khalifa. 2021 was another interesting year where DMCC registered over, registered 2,845 companies only in 2021. Never in our history have we registered anything close to that. And we anticipate a very strong push this year as well. This, bring, this brings us uh, to the diamond trade. Here we are discussing one of the world's most precious commodities in a country where virtually zero diamond trade took place 20 years ago. And as I stand here today, I am humbled and very grateful to share with you in the year tw uh, that in the year 2021, Dubai became the number one rough diamond trading hub in the world. With $22.8 billion in trade last year, we're continuing to grow thanks to the trust and support received from many of you here today. This is, a, this is a key milestone for the country and the industry as a whole. This did not happen on its own. It took hard work and determination, and it certainly did not just happen because of DMCC. We accomplished this together, and I'm especially proud of our Kimberley Process team who set the standard high and processed so many shipments and kept operating throughout the pandemic. I'd like to also add the KP team of the UAE are the only ISO certified KP office for, as of now. Taking a step back for a minute, it is clear that we're, we're witnessing a geopolitical shift away from traditional centers and towards continental Africa, Surat, and of course Dubai. And if you look back behind you, and think of the conferences back in the 90s and early 2000s. You do notice a very diversified crowd here, and that, that, that will continue. That includes more women in the crowd, not just origins. However, this with this transition of leadership comes the requirement of greater responsibility. Discussing the future of diamonds is about economics and development, and in many cases, basic human survival. For many, diamonds are not dis a discretionary lu luxury. They are a fundamental trade. They feed populations. It is our collective responsibility to ensure the stability and security of those, par those parts of our economic that rely upon us to preserve and develop year by year. And I want to ensure you all that Dubai takes this responsibility very seriously and will continue to champion the highest ethical standards in order to drive the global industry. As a whole, as, as, a, as a world leading trading hub, we recognize the need to focus on the producing nations. We need to remember why we exist. And in doing so, I'm pleased to share that 10% of Dubai Diamond Exchange related revenue is given to Resolve's Diamond Development and Peace Diamond Initiative, the funding that goes towards supporting the responsible sorting of artisanal mined diamonds. As one of our most diversified diamond conference to date, I'm pleased to welcome so many stakeholders from Africa, India, and Israel here today. Not to mention His Excellency Peter from Belgium. Thank you. 
I hope you're each able to network and discuss the issues that are relevant to our market and make new contacts that will define what you do next. As an industry, we need to detect and confront the implications of change, to take account of the realities and how we adapt. And we are here to listen to the experts. How did diamonds perform so well during the pandemic? How has consumers' behavior changed and how will it evolve? And how will technology and automation impact the industry? Having grown to become the rough diamond capital of the world, we understand the importance of listening to the market, adapting, and taking action. And it's through the same method we will continue to work towards becoming the capital of, for polished diamond as well, and it doesn't stop there. Having created the right environment that has allowed diamond trade to thrive, it is our intention to work with and grow other industries vertical, verticals such as colored gemstones, that includes emeralds and other stones, and lab-grown diamonds, the latter of which I look forward to hearing more about during the course of the day. Goes without saying, this will be a very busy week, a week that I will personally enjoy, and I hope you enjoy what you do as well. One I'm particularly looking forward to is the JGT Dubai, a great example of COVID cooperation between Informa Markets and the Italian exhibit, Exhibition Group. As, two, as of the two industries' leading organizers, I am certain it will grow into one of the world's premier jewelry shows. I'd also like to extend a warm welcome to the Angolan delegation and highlight their investment forum, which takes place tomorrow. I am aware it clashes, clashes with the JGT Dubai. However, for those with a focus on Angola, I suggest you make the time and attend. As an extension of almost two years of open formal cooperation between our, our nations, I also like to highlight the official opening of the Israel Diamond Exchange Office in Almas Tower. And I'd like to thank some of the folks who are here that worked hard in making this happen at a time where we couldn't meet face to face. I was somewhere in the Mediterranean, online, with a, with a background filter, talking to Yoram and doing the agreement virtually. What was virtual is the reality today. It's already been blessed with the mezuzah over there, and you can see it on my Instagram. Um, but this official opening is happening, and the business is growing, going both ways. We also have the World Federation of Diamond uh, Bourses and International Diamond Manufacturing Association's President's Meetings as well, as live demonstrations of the, uh, <clears throat> as well as live demonstrations of the Da Vinci machines by Sinova. And finally, I'm pleased to announce we will also be unveiling the De Beers Colonnade Blue, potentially one of the most expensive colored diamonds to be sold at auction by Sotheby's. We'll be on show in Elmas at the end of the week. Before I hand over back to Martin Leek, Dolly leaves me to welcome you once again to Dubai and wish you all a very successful and productive conference. Um, before I end, I'm gonna end in the next 10 seconds. I seriously, I seriously thank everyone that contributed to where we are today, including constructive critics, non-constructive critics, that kept us on our toes. And for the historically leading centers, there's a lot to learn. I was mentioning to His Excellency Peter, uh, the, uh, the, the Belgian ambassador to the UAE, Peter Klaus, that uh, today I have more reasons to go to Belgium, not just diamonds, not just the shows, not, not just the amazing museums, especially in Brussels, but also for cacao and coffee. There are, there are strategic connections. DP World is in Antwerp. And similarly, we have relationships in your very happy neighbor, Holland, and, and expect this relationship to grow because our success is also Belgian success and vice versa. So expect more growth coming up because the responsibility of this industry is not to Dubai all your responsibility. It's a global industry uh, responsibility and we are all connected here. It's a different world going forward. So make the most out of it and don't hold back from telling us what we could have done better because that's what brought us here today. So thank you very much, and I wish you all the best.